Joining me now is Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers, uh, Republican Conference Chair, who wants to talk about zombies. Z I love zombies. Zombies are great. Um, now, I don't necessarily love them in federal budgets, though, Congresswoman uh, Morris <laughs> Rogers. And you got this great new ad about zombie programs. I, I just what a great approach to dealing with these uh, with these uh, self perpetuating uh, spending uh, uh, mechanisms in the federal budget. It, it's true. There there are hundreds of programs that have not been reviewed for many many years in Washington D.C. We refer to it as unauthorized spending. It's estimated that two decades ago, maybe 10% of the discretionary spending was unauthorized. It's grown now to 30%. So we're talking $310 billion this year in unauthorized spending. These are programs, agencies. Uh, some examples, the Department of Justice, it hasn't been uh, authorized since 2009. The Bureau of Land Management, it hasn't been reauthorized since 1996. The Department of Veterans Affairs, $60 billion in programs have, have exceeded their authorization, has not been authorized since 1998. The State Department has not been authorized to, since 2003. And, and it's really, these deadlines are built into the law to force Congress to reevaluate and improve, uh, approve these programs before they continue. And if Congress doesn't take action, then they just kind of stay on the books. They're zombie programs, and we need, on behalf of the people, uh, this is a way that the people assert their, their will through their elected representatives is to review, rethink, and eliminate some of these programs. Congressman, I, I, I guess people are going to be curious about how this has been allowed to go on because, of course, you have annual appropriations. We have budget fights every year, of course, so over, over annual appropriations. And a lot of people understand the difference between appropriations and, uh, and, and what we call entitlements, but mandatory spending for things like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and interest payments on the national debt, where Congress doesn't actually authorize it, they just note it in the federal budget. Everything else, though, is supposed to be authorized on a year-to-year -year basis. So how did these programs uh, somehow escape that? How did they become the undead? <laughs> well, for, th for this portion of the budget, uh, these are, these are programs that have exceeded their deadline. And these deadlines are built in to, to force Congress and, and the elected representatives of the people to spend the time to, to review, perhaps rethink, or eliminate a program. But if, if Congress doesn't act, uh, in too many of these cases, we just see the funding continuing. So it's, it's, this is an issue where Congress has a mechanism on these programs to actually stop the funding they just simply choose not to use it, I guess. is, is they, they, By default, if they do nothing, it just continues. Is that, is that a, a pretty good description of what's going on? Yes. Uh, and what the legislation would do is then set in a mechanism. There would be penalties built into the law if Congress doesn't act. And it, and it sets it up so that in, for the current programs that are uh, have exceeded their, their expiration date, as well as programs in the future, if Congress doesn't take action, every year there would be a built-in 10% sequester uh, to that program, to the funding, to force, uh, to bring it to our attention and then to uh, encourage uh, Congress, uh, the people, to actually take some action. So um, th this, this bill that you're uh, talking about is the Unauthorized Spending Accountability Act of 2016. I, I guess we could call it the Walking Dead bill, um, but <laughs> it's uh, it, this is... This is very important because part of this is building in accountability. Some of these programs, Congress may very well want to have continued, but yeah. their spending really should be reviewed. They should be reauthorized through a normal process. And each Congress really has the responsibility of doing that. And what this bill does is it sets up financial incentives so even the people running these programs are going to want to go back to Congress because otherwise... Uh, their their funding starts getting eaten away, and in three years, it just flat out dies unless Congress acts. That's right. That's right. Uh, so clearly, too much of the federal government is on autopilot, and this this bill, this legislation, proposed legislation, would challenge the status quo. And we see so many examples where federal agencies are uh, they they are not accountable. 
they they become disconnected from their their mission and and on behalf of the people as the people's representative it is important that we do our jobs too and and that's where it is so important on behalf of uh, hard, you know, those hard-earned tax dollars that people have sent to the federal government that we ensure that they're being spent wisely, but also that these agencies are adhering to the consent of the governed. You know, yes. the Declaration of Ind Independence, you know, our founding fathers defined a just government as one that derives its power from the consent of the governed, and I believe that so much of the, the fear and the frustration across this country is really driven by people who believe that they're losing representative government, that, uh, that they're an executive, is writing rules, regulations, executive orders, and really taking away our ability to make the best decisions for ourselves, our families, our communities. Uh, it's being taken away by a government uh, that thinks it knows best and is exercising power and not being held accountable. Congresswoman, this brings us to a, maybe a, a broader point about about budgeting, which is the fact that the federal government, Congress really, I should say, Congress does not employ zero-based budgeting. Uh, they, mm -hmm. they do what's called uh, baseline budgeting. Most, uh, you know, when I, I, when I was managing P&Ls in the private sector for about 15 years, I would sometimes try to go to my boss and say, "Well, I'm going to I'm going to do baseline budgeting here. I'm going to just make adjustments and percentages to the spending that you let me do last year." And my boss would always say the same thing to me: "You're dreaming, pal. Go back to your office and justify every single dollar you want to spend next year." And it, which is zero-based budgeting. You have to build from the ground up and explain exactly why you need to spend every single one of these dollars on an annual basis. Congress. I believe, for the most part, does baseline budgeting. They take what they did before and they add to it or maybe occasionally subtract to it uh, when we get lucky. Um, this is a good approach to dealing with the acute issue, but isn't the chronic, isn't the approach to the chronic issue really to force Congress to do zero-based budgeting rather than baseline budgeting? That would be another important reform that we, we need to... Uh, take on behalf of the people of this country. Uh, you know, I'm someone that was elected to Congress uh, wanting to pass a balanced budget amendment. Now, yep. you, as you know, amending the Constitution is, is, is very difficult, but I believe we need to put in place, uh, 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 we need to put in place the mechanism that will force Congress, the elected representatives of the people, we are closest to the people, we're most accountable to the people, uh, but Congress needs to be forced to make the tough fiscal decisions that we need in this country. And we budget based upon the 1974 Budget Act. It's not, it's not it's, this whole process is not set in the Constitution. It was set in, this, the current process was put in place in 1974. And that, I do believe we need to reform the budget process. We need to start with baseline. There's other reforms, too, uh, and that's where I think my legislation, the Unauthorized Spending Accountability Act, is part of it. Um, but we need to be looking at how do we restore our Article I power of the purse authority that is so fundamental and, and how we exercise the, the power and the authority that is and the responsibility that we've been given by the people who have elected us to these positions. And so if, if Congress becomes bystanders in this process uh, with the federal government, so much of it being on autopilot, then the people are becoming by, bystanders. And that's why all of this is so important. And yes, we'll, we, we'll debate spending levels and, and, and try to um, assert in the appropriations process, but we need to go to the fundamentals and just reform the whole budget process itself. I, I agree. Now, Congresswoman, where can people go to find out more about uh, this uh, th this very needed reform that you were proposing, the Unauthorized Spending Accountability Act of 2016, and how can they help you support that? Well, it, get the word out. So call your representative, call your senator, and ask them to support the USA Act. You can certainly visit my website, mcmorris.house.gov slash USA Act. We have uh, a lot of information and fun facts and the zombie video posted there. 
Facebook, it's Nick Morris Rogers. On Twitter, it's at Kathy McMorris. Uh, we're driving this on social media. I really believe that this is an idea whose time has come, and that as we are debating in Congress uh, the importance of restoring our constitutional role, uh, fundamental responsibility to exercise the power of the purse, these are the kind of reforms that we need to be moving forward, because clearly uh, the, the, the legislative branch on behalf of the people has, uh, through the years, given too much of its power away, and we've got to get that back where it belongs on behalf of the people. Congresswoman Kathy McMorris-Rogers, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank